I'm here today to talk about the fascial tissue and how the fascial tissue plays a key role in our health, not only in our physical health, but our emotional health. Hi, my name is Kristen Husted, and my practice is Well Balanced. I run an integrative holistic therapy practice, helping people to heal from physical and emotional and spiritual issues uh, that are trapped in their body. And so let's talk about the fascial system today. So the fascial system is like this tensegrity model. It is the scaffolding that holds our body together. It is one continuous piece of connective tissue that goes around every ligament, tendon, organ, nerve, our bones, our brain, our heart, our stomach, everything in our body, even into the organs and the tissue to the cellular level. So it's one piece of connective tissue. It is the internet highway that gives and connects this energy and information to the whole body and also connects the whole body, it's communication. So this fascial system is a key player in our immune system, it's a key player in our pain management, and it's a key player in our emotional management. And so what do I mean by that? Well, the fascial tissue, which is the scaffolding of our body, the internet highway, the band-aid that holds our body together when it is under threat, stress, or injury is very sensitive. So our fascial tissue has 250 million nerve endings in it. It has 600 to 1,000 more nerve endings in it than any other tissue in the body. So that makes it a very highly sensitive organ. And so of course this fascial tissue, when under threat with an injury, when under threat with an illness, when under threat with a, an emotional stressor or um, emotional illness, will lock up. That's its job. It's very sensitive. It's listening to every thought in your head and it's listening to any threats from the outside and it's communicating because it's one continuous tissue that holds your entire body together and communicates to your entire body. It's an interconnected a highway system is letting the body know what's going on and it's going to be very reactive to our thoughts and to our emotions, to our stress and to physical issues and illnesses. So when the fascial tissue is healthy, it helps the body slide and move together. It helps your muscles have ease and grace and have you, let you have a big range of motion. When the tissue is threatened, tight or injured through overuse, through underuse, through an operation, through scar tissue, through emotional stressors, through anything like that, an Ill illness or injury, the fascial tissue will lock up. And when the fascial tissue it locks up, we have less range of motion. This beautiful tissue that's normally very webby and very mucousy and very hydrated gets dried out and compressed. And so what does that mean for our health and wellness? Well, when the tissue gets dried out and compressed, it doesn't allow your body to move and function in order to find that range of motion, in order to bring it back into homeostasis. It also keeps our body from releasing toxins, releasing emotions. It compresses our immune system. So now your body isn't um, hydrated the way it should be. It doesn't have the messages uh, going around telling everyone what to do like it should. And it's compressed. They've even had research where tight fascia tissue actually is a breeding ground for tumors and cancer cells because it embeds in it and it feeds off of it. Now, a loose fascia allows the body to release the toxins, the emotions, the stressors uh, that no longer serve it in order to come back into health and wellness. And so how do you get a body to operate in this manner versus this manner? Well, that is a complicated and yet simple uh, t task. So a lot of times you do need a manual therapist like myself to release the tissue. But a lot of times, once that is released, you just manage yourself daily. And so once the body is released, do you get into a habit and a practice of self-care? 
But let's start with releasing the body. So how do we release this fascial tissue that is interconnected and so sensitive and locks up very easily? So how does the fascia release? The fascia release is through slow, deliberate breathing, 5.5 second count in and 5.5 second count out, focusing on your heart, breathing in something very positive for yourself, exhaling what no longer serves you. I talk about this all the time, but when the body feels calm and safe and in the parasympathetic nervous system, then the tissue will relax. And when that tissue, let me grab this again, so that when that tissue relaxes, then you can um, start to stretch it. So a therapist can start to stretch it and move it and get it back into balance. And so once the tissue is back into balance and your system is at a go and your immune system's running and the internet highway is connecting again and your body's feeling good and your energy is feeling good, that's when you, it's self-care comes in. And so meditating is a key part in calming your mind in order to calm your body. And so when we have a calm mind, we have a calm body. When we have a calm body, we have a calm mind. The two cannot be separated. And so I do believe a key part of healing is through meditation and quieting your mind. And the next step is through yoga, stretch, multi-dimensional movements, multi-dimensional stretch movements, hydrate the fascia, multi-dimensional weight bearing movements, strengthen the fascia and weight training in a functional way. Functional weight training is very uh, hydrating and very strengthening to the fascia. And when that fascia and the body is strong and the immune system strong and the tissue is, is communicating to everyone, your body is gonna stay out of injury and illness much more than if you're stressed and sedentary, making sure each day that you open up your body in a lots of different movements and ways and not just sitting. So any kind of sustained overuse uh, inflames the fascia as well. So finding balance through, through meditation, finding balance through stretch, and finding balance in breathing helps you relax the body in order to release the stressors of the day. And so that's why healing can be very um, complicated because it is not one and done. And so also eating healthy whole foods and hydrating and sleeping well are also part of a holistic program. So I hope this helps you to see a bigger picture in your health. And instead of going to the doctor and wanting a pill or wanting a one and done fix, look at your body as a system. Look at it holistically. Where are you lacking? Where can you strengthen? Where can you let go? And where can you increase your um, hydration and your food intake? In order to walk into newness, we have to start walking into new patterns of thinking, leaving by, behind the old behaviors, coming into a new perspective of what it means to be whole, healthy, and healed. Thank you so much and have a great day.